The TI-84 Plus is the first graphic calculator that I ever used. I inherited it from my sister when I was first starting high school, and I never really had a use for it ever since. Once I entered college, all my classes required me to use just a regular old calculator instead of a graphing calculator, so this TI-84 Plus was just sitting in my drawer for the past five years. That always felt a little bit of a waste to me because when I think about it, the TI-84 Plus is like an ultra-portable battery-powered computer. You see, the TI-84 Plus uses a CPU called the Z-Log Z80, and for reference, that same CPU was used in the ColecoVision game console and the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. The big difference though is that the TI is just meant to be a calculator. Sure, you can play games on it, but compared to the Sinclair especially, TIOS isn't really an operating system. There's no file manager, there's no text editor, it is what it is, it's just a calculator. But what if we could run an OS on it? What would it be like? That's really the crux of this video because I found a fully fledged Unix-like operating system for my TI-84 Plus, and it's called NightOS. NightOS is a Unix-like operating system that runs on the Z80-based Texas Instrument calculators. These include the TI-73 and the TI-80 series, starting from the TI-81 all the way up to the TI-86. My calculator, the TI-84, was released in 2004. NightOS, like I said earlier, is a full-fledged operating system. It's complete with its own kernel, it has a complete file system, has multitasking and dynamic memory management. Best of all is that NightOS is free and open source software and the entire source code is available on GitHub. Development for NightOS is a bit slow, but that doesn't mean that the operating system isn't feature rich. What I want to do for this video is to show off a lot of the features of NightOS. So if someone's interested in installing it in their own calculator, they have an idea already of what it's going to be like. Installing NightOS is pretty straightforward. You're going to need four things. One, a compatible calculator. Two, a USB-A to USB-B cable to connect your calculator to your computer. Three, the TILP software. And four, the appropriate NightOS file for your calculator. We can download the NightOS file from the website. The link for download the latest version appears to be broken, but the browse other versions link is working just fine. Once you're there, select the most recent commit that succeeded and you will find the files you need on the side. My calculator is the TI-84 Plus. I downloaded the TI-84P.AXU file. Moving on, let's also get the TILP software. TILP stands for Texas Instruments Link Program, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's designed to connect your calculator to your computer. It's available for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. To download, go to the TILP website and select the appropriate operating system. If you're on Linux, download the tar.gz file, extract its contents, and use the provided shell script to install TILP to your computer. Make sure that the file is executable before running the script. If you're on Windows, it's really simple. Just download the exe file and go through the setup process. And once you're done, you're gonna be doing the exact same steps as you would on Linux. Before we can begin flashing NightOS onto our calculator, we need to make sure that the calculator has the supported boot code. It needs a boot code of 1.02 or older in order for it to work well. The way that you can check the boot code is you press mode, then alpha, and then S, and it will show you the boot code at the top. If boot code is 1.02 or lower, then you should be good to go. With the appropriate boot code and TILP installed, now we can begin flashing the operating system onto the calculator. So the first thing that we need to do is set the calculator into flashing mode. First, turn your calculator off, and then open the back and remove a single battery. Then, connect your calculator to your computer using the USB-B to USB-A cable. Then, press and hold the Dell button and reinsert the battery. When you flip it over, you should now be in flashing mode. Now we can open TILP, which should recognize your calculator. Go to File, then Send Files, and select the file we downloaded earlier. Click Forward, and the flashing process should begin. If you get an error, just try it again until it works. The flashing process shouldn't take too long, just a few minutes.
Once it's done, unplug the USB cable and voila, you're in NightOS. The first time I used NightOS, it came with a large selection of different software that I can use, mostly demos and games, but this most recent version I'm using is much leaner, which I personally like. I'll install a few more programs later, but for now let's focus on the, the base install. There's seven programs, a file manager, a text editor, a calendar, a programming calculator, settings, a game called Phoenix, and a periodic table. We also have the license for NightOS on the bottom right hand corner. Navigating the OS is pretty simple. The arrow keys move up, down, left, and right. And when I want to select something, I just hit enter. So overall, pretty straightforward. At the very bottom edge of the screen are three options, an app folder, a menu button, and a running screen, which are controlled using the topmost buttons that are directly underneath them. It took me a little bit of time before I realized how I'm supposed to access those buttons. But once I realized it, it made sense to me why those buttons were chosen. The app folder lists all the applications currently installed on the calculator, along with its icon. The running screen lists all the applications currently running. So far, the only thing running is the license program. So to kill the process, I select options, then kill. And now we see that the process isn't running anymore. The menu button is the main way that you interact with the operating system. On the main home page is how you put it to sleep, you shut it down, and you restart. The app folder and the running screen can be accessed at any time simply by pressing their respective buttons. While the menu button's functionality changes depending on the app that you're using. Let's take a look at what each of these apps do. First thing I wanted to take a look at was the settings because I noticed that the date and the time on the calculator were wrong. So I wanted to set it to the appropriate times in order to give the feel of a real operating system. Also, I don't want the calendar to be wrong every time I look at it. So let's go change that right now. Next up, we have the calendar and it's a calendar. Pretty simple and easy to understand calendar. It's nice. We also have the periodic table. I'm not sure why they decided to include this. I'd imagine it's the idea of it being used as an educational tool. I think it's pretty cute that it's included in the base install, but I'm not really sure who thought it was like the best option. Now let's take a look at Calxis. Inside Calxis, we have a hex editor, a disassembler, a port monitor, and a file system option. But let's start off with the hex editor option be a large amount of hexadecimal numbers that you'd be able to edit. We can change which area we go to by pressing the menu button and then going back down. This gives us the option to switch to a different mode. Next up, let's take a look at the disassembler. If you write assembly code and you want to edit it, that's another option available to you. We got the port monitor, depending on which port you want to enter into the calculator. File system and help tend to fail every time I use them, so I'm not going to be showing them to you. Let's take a look at the only game on the system at the moment, Phoenix. At first I wasn't really sure how I'm supposed to play it, but it's actually really simple. You move around with the arrow keys and then you fire using the second button. The goal of the game is to collect money to upgrade your ship while also fending off the various hordes and enemies that you encounter in the game. Your health bar is in the right hand side it's a little bit hard to see but it's a small thin black bar that scales the rest of the screen once you defeat the boss you get access to a shop so that way you can change your weapon and repair your ship let's take a look at the running program functionality so i'm going to kill both of these apps to make space in the memory moving on we're going to take a look at the file manager now here we can see that it really is a Unix-like operating system that has bin and etc, home, lib. It's got a lot of the main folders that you would expect, var for example. The last thing we're going to take a look at is the text editor. The text editor took me a little bit of time to understand, but the general idea is that if you want to write letters, you press alpha. And if you want it to be uppercase or lowercase, you can shuffle between both of them pressing alpha and you can tell which mode you're in depending on what character is shown in the top right corner. If you want to work with non-numerical keys, 
you press second and you cycle through the different varieties of non-numerical characters. Saving the file is also very easy. I, I mentioned earlier how the menu button is what gives you the functionality for the rest of the apps. And in this case, it's for saving and opening files. So I can save a file in the home directory like this. I just have to enter forward slash home forward slash. I'm going to name this file as test.txt and it will save within that directory. Here we can see that the test file is right there. I mentioned earlier how this version is a lot leaner than an earlier version that I tried out. Let's take a look at that earlier version so that way we can see a little bit more of what NIDOS is capable of. We can find a snapshot of NIDOS on tiCalc.org from 2015. I'll provide a link in the description below for you to be able to download. Once you downloaded the link, extract the contents of the zip file and look for your respective file. For me, it's the .8xu for the TI-84+. Instead of following the procedure we did earlier in order to put the calculator into flashing mode, you know, taking the battery out and then pressing the bell button and putting the battery back in, NIDOS has built-in functionality to make it easier to upgrade and to change the OS. All I have to do is go into the settings menu, select Upgrade OS, and proceed. This puts the calculator into flashy mode already. Now I just need to connect the cable and flash the new operating system using TILP. Taking a look through the app menu again, we have a lot more software to play with, but it's missing the icon preview, which isn't really that big a deal. Let's start with the first new addition, the counting demo. True to its name, all it does is counts, and it counts in hexadecimal. Next up, we have the graphical demo. I like this demo because it's similar to the one on my Rockbox Sansa clip, though this one is much faster. Moving forward, we have the Rockbox game demo, and I don't know how to use this. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the controls were, but I just couldn't get the hang of it. I'm sure there are instructions online that explain how exactly I'm supposed to go about using this Rubik's Cube, but I just gave up after a little bit of time. Cool concept, but not something that I'm really looking forward to keeping. Next up, we have Z Tetris, which is considered the best version of Tetris for the TI-83 ported to NIDOS. And it's Tetris. <laughs> It's Tetris. That's all it is, really. It's cool that they ported it, though. I, I really appreciate having Tetris on this calculator. I think Tetris is just one of those games that's universal to everyone. Anybody can pick it up and play it. And the controls for this version of Tetris are pretty intuitive, which I appreciate. Next up, we have the programming calculator. Is this the calculator that NIDOS has been needing this entire time? Not really, but it's a good start. All it is is a binary and hexadecimal calculator with some very basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. It's not as intuitive as a regular algebraic calculator, but if you just need your calculator to do very basic mathematics, then this programming calculator will definitely do the job. The last thing we have is Pixel Madness, which is, in my opinion, the best demo on this entire operating system. This is my favorite one. I spent a lot of time using it. It's just so much fun. There's a lot of little cute things that they incorporate into it. A lot of fun little demonstrations of just the capabilities of the CPU and what you can really get away with when using a monochrome screen. It makes the prospect of game development on the TI-84 Plus using NIDOS to be something very exciting. If someone has the time and the resources to be able to write assembly code to make a very well thought out game. I think that's really, really incredible. And it's very exciting. The, the thing that makes NIDOS interesting and exciting for me is the prospect of future software, the prospect of having a, a very legitimate operating system on such a portable package. 
not just in the form of a phone, but an 8-bit operating system. I think that's really cool. Anyways, that's pretty much all the demos available with the original snapshot that I first used. I think it's pretty cool, but I like the leanness of the newer snapshot that I had installed, and I think I'm going to be sticking with that instead. NightOS is still not stable. While I was recording this video, I actually had the operating system crash on me twice. So while I do sing praises for NightOS for what it's been able to do so far, I, I do recognize that it does have its limitations, but it's limitations that I think will definitely be able to be addressed in the future versions of NightOS. On the whole, NightOS is an interesting idea, and I, I like the concept of having a portable 8-bit machine. It may not be for everyone, but it certainly is for me. If you wish to keep the original calculator functionality, though, it is possible to revert NightOS back into the original TIOS. First, you need to download the ROM from Texas Instruments website, and then afterwards, go back into the settings and put the calculator back into flashy mode and follow the procedure outlined earlier in this video in order to bring it back to its original state. Once you're done doing that, you should be back to the stock form. I hope you all found this as interesting as I did, and I hope you all have a great day today. Take care. Check it out, the latest calculator technology. Full 8-bit operating system right in your pocket. Unix-like file system, multitasking, periodic table. It's got it all. It can do everything but do algebra. It can't do algebra? Nah, there was so much stuff into it, there was no more room for the calculator.